Welcome, my friends. This is a very grave broadcast that we're about to engage in here today. In fact, the information we're about to cover is so important that I have cleared the decks. There are no guests today. Uh, I hope that you realize the information I'm about to cover is of the absolute greatest importance to not just the United States, but everyone on this planet. This morning, as I watched congressional testimony clips from yesterday, I was so blown away that when my wife came in and tried to talk to me, I, I, I told her, I cannot talk to you. And it was not drama. She, she'd never seen me in 14 years act like this. She said, what's wrong? And I said, uh, you see what's on the screen. And she went in the other room and watched it and came back and said, my God, do we need to get out of here? She said, everything in my gut tells me get out of here. But I've promised to stay in the United States. But just what hit me is that we've been right about it all, except that it's worse than we said. And it's so real. And it's so horrible. And it's so destructive and dangerous, and we know exactly where it leads, because humans behave the same over and over again in history. We are forced to either exert ourselves to the maximum extent to reverse this, or to run to the hills. And, and that goes for everybody. What is going to unfold on this planet is by its design constructed to destroy and to pull down and to assault everything good. It is the final revolution that the globalists have talked about against humanity itself against the nation state, against the individual, against every institution. By the globalist, against property rights, the family, everything. Free speech, all of it on fire right now. What do I speak of? And we're going to play the video in its entirety and I'm going to be stopping it and making comments, but here is the headline, Panetta, international permission for war, Trump's congressional permission for military actions. Now, that's the headline that the video of Defense Secretary Panetta in congressional testimony with Dempsey and others said. But it's, it's worse than that. I mean, that's a quote, but they went on to say, Congress isn't even in the loop. And the senators begin to breathe heavy and actually flush red in shock. And uh, Senator Sessions starts saying, I'm, I'm actually losing my breath here. I'm, uh, I'm breathless because... Here are the generals, the Joint Chiefs of Staff and others, all behind the Secretary of Defense. And while they're saying this to the Armed Services Committee, their bosses, they are all have a belligerent attitude. And Panetta... Over and over again, because I watched the compilation and then went to C-SPAN and actually found the entire hearing and sat there for an hour watching it, and it's even worse than the compilation shows. Now, I knew they were already doing this. And I'm going to break down, if you're a new listener, why this is the biggest deal ever. I already knew they were doing this, but to have them get before Congress that passes the laws, that controls the purse string, and declares war, and that commissions officers, the Congress is the boss of the military. 
And the Congress then hands a bill of war with direct orders to the top general only in a time of war declared by them. And then he becomes the commander in chief only during that prescribed piece of legislation and that mission. Because you don't want the president being able to become a dictator and declare war on their own, as we've seen thousands of times in history, hundreds and hundreds of times in the last 200 years in Latin America alone, sometimes three or four times a year per country, different generals declare themselves el jefe, the chief, the boss, el presidente, uh, leader for life. Presidents, prime ministers, Roman senators constantly would declare themselves military dictator. But this goes one further on this day that lives in infamy. Today is Thursday, March 8th, 2012. But as they said in the times of Caesar, beware the Ides of March. Let the day of Wednesday, March 7th, 2012 be a day that lives in infamy. Just as last year, there was another date that I said was a major milestone when Obama put out a public letter from the White House and said, I don't need anything from Congress. Congress has no authority over war. Read the letter. We are linked to it in our article that we've written. Paul Watson's written on the subject. And he says, I do this through the authority of the U.N. and for the credibility of the U.N. So it's a precedent. And so, in an act of brazen precedent, the Secretary of Defense, approved and confirmed by Congress, funded by Congress, came before the Senate and told them, you are not in the equation. And they'd say, but the Congress is over war powers. That's the Constitution. The Consti and, and the military brass and Panetta said no. The United Nations and NATO and foreign bodies. And the senators are all looking at them because they all know this has already happened. But now it's being openly spoken. Now the world is being told, you're a joke, Senate. Suddenly, all over the United States, there are regular Army and Marine Corps checkpoints run by TSA on the streets. They call them TSA inspectors. Oh, the TSA inspectors are coming with the Army, just feds, completely out of their jurisdiction, engaging in a slow motion martial law rollout to acclimate everyone. And now, not just at the Kite Festival, but at other events now, the Army and National Guard and State Guard are at the events searching and directing people. Where I live now. Two weeks ago it was Army and TSA in Dallas. Now it's in Austin. And it's in your town. This is it. Now let me explain why this is beyond Julius Caesar crossing the Rubicon on January 10th, 49 BC. Leading one legion, Legio, The eighth of Gemini, Julius Caesar, General Julius Caesar crossed the Rubicon River, the boundary between the Gaul province and the main province of Rome, Italy. To the north and Italy proper to the south, a legally prescribed action forbidden to any army leading general. It was designed, and the prohibition was set in place, as the greatest law in Rome to protect the Roman Republic from a coup d'etat, internal military threat. Thus, Caesar's military action began a civil war. This act of war on the Roman Republic by Julius Caesar led to widespread approval amongst the Roman civilians who believed him to be a hero. The historical records differ about which decisive comment Caesar made on crossing the Rubicon. But the most 
historically referenced is the die is cast. Because he was committing himself at that point. Now, was he an enemy of Rome? He believed he wasn't. He wasn't working for a foreign power. But he was killed for it in the Senate. But that idea of having a king, a Caesar, began to degenerate the empire. Because if you don't have basic law, you have nothing and corruption set in. This is far worse what we face because the generals didn't announce that the president had the power, which is on its face a total fraud and well known to anyone who's read the Constitution or swore an oath to it like these officers have. It's the first thing you're taught in ROTC, first thing you're taught in officer training, first thing you're taught in the military, first thing in your handbook is the chain of command. They know that. They know it's Congress controlled by the American people and the Constitution, Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence. Let me state it clearly. This is beyond treason. This is invasion. This is war against America. Just reading to you from Encyclopedia Britannica. Caesar's act was an act of war against the Roman Republic. This is beyond that because Obama and his cohorts openly work for foreign mega central banks and corporations who have created this international body to cede domestic power to themselves. This is a international corporate coup d'etat against America. And all of these people pushing this should be arrested today.